a lot of you know the other artistic director, Bobby Sanabria. He will be here soon. He's going to make another gig. And I'm really happy that um, musicians are out and about getting a lot of gigs right now. But he'll join us shortly. And um, So Bobby and I have this, uh, um, this program, Bronx Rising, which we do every month. Um, so a specific program where we bring together um, sort of different cultural cultural traditions and um, and you know featuring music that's relevant to the Bronx, but also come bringing together traditions um, to show their um, that we have a lot of like across the different um, across the different communities. So um, today we're re returning to um, a, a theme we've done before. Um, in flamenco, they have this style of music called um, canciones de ida y vuelta, round trip. This idea that like music, you know, when Spain came over, Spaniards came over from Spain. Western Hemisphere, they did this the one way, the cultural back and forth. They came, you know, brought some things from Spain, during the colonial era, but things were brought back. There, were, there was a cross-fertilization of traditions, of music, of ideas, of, of all kinds of cultural um, commodities. So, um, so we want to look, look at that today, at some of these um, sort of uh, cross-fertilizations in music, in a style called rumba. We did this um, sort of um, round trip, um, sort of a um, look at traditions a couple years ago, seems like a long time ago, but for the pandemic, we looked at the pedanera. Today we're looking at rumba, and we're going to look at rumba from the traditions of, um, many are familiar with the Cuban rumba, the um, rumba flamenca, we were hearing a little bit of that um, for, um, on, on the speakers, on the CD, and also um, in the Mexican tradition as well. So just a couple things before we start. While you're here, if you're not singing or dancing, please keep your mask on, try to keep everyone um, safe, um, so keep your mask on. And um, also, we hope to see you know we have a new space. Um, this is we've had Bobby and I have been doing programming here for close to a decade, I think, here in this little space. Um, we are moving to the Bronx Music Hall. Some of you might have been there. Um, on one on 163rd Street, across from Boricua College. We have an outdoor plaza there. We've been doing a lot of things there. There'll be more events and concerts there this summer. So um, you can look out our Facebook page, BS Media Music. You can see what's coming up there. And um, also while you're here, you know, um, it's hard to see, we do have a new exhibit up that's here for a couple weeks. Um, we have the a visiting artist from Puerto Rico, Pablo Marcano Garcia. You know, this week, um, tomorrow, is the Puerto Rican Day Parade, one of our biggest, um, if you're Puerto Rican, one of our biggest celebrations of the year. And um, all week long, there's been a lot of events leading up to that. And this is the first live Puerto Rican parade since the pandemic. But Pablo, in honor of that, Pablo brought up this exhibit from Puerto Rico, and um, the main part of the exhibit is honoring Roberto Clemente. A lot of you know the baseball player Roberto Clemente. This year is the 50th anniversary of when he died. He died, um, there was an earthquake in Nicaragua, and he died on a plane that went down over the ocean while giving aid, bringing aid to the people of Nicaragua. So we celebrate the idea of arts and entertainment, arts and culture in service to the community and the legacy of Roberto Clemente. So that's kind of what we want to do here. We want to celebrate that. that we'll, this will be up here for a couple weeks, there's information on what days it's um, up if you want to come back and see all the work or bring some friends to see all the work. But right now, um, our first band, you're going to see three different bands tonight, but it's three different forms of music, all somehow related, and they'll, they'll all talk about how this music's related. So our first band, though, is we want to know um, a Bronx-based band. Oh, all your, and all, by the way, all the bios in here, I'm not going to read all the bios, the bios are in a program book if you don't have it, but a Bronx-based band that performs um, some of the musical traditions of from Mexico, like Son Marocho, Son Vasteco, led, led by Sinue Padilla, and we're going to welcome to the stage, Tarana B. the music 
from Sotavento in Mexico. Talking about the Sun Jarocho. And, and you can say, well, it, but this event is rumba, right? Well, we have something called the rumba jarocha. And uh, the roots of this rumba jarocha in Mexico is West Africa. Uh, Congo and Bantu, roots that arise to Mexico, to Veracruz, and also uh, indigenous roots, and also Andalusian roots, mostly uh, Sephardi, uh, Orisco, and Gypsy roots that arrived to Mexico to the new state. And through the colony, it started this mixing. But La Rumba, the first uh, documents we have talking about Rumba, is in Veracruz, in San Andres, Tuxtla, in the southern Veracruz, Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and the tobacco plantations in the middle eight, uh, 1800s. We have an important migration from Cuba going to the tobacco plantations. And we have some certain songs, certain instruments, like the maribol or manibula, and the wiro, and certain instruments that Son uh, Jarocho adopt, and we play still today. So, we want to play first esta canción llamada La Bamba, este son. Do you know La Bamba? Yeah. Okay, La Bamba was registered in 1683. In it's a protest song. And uh, this kind of rhythms in Bamba came mostly from Bamba River, Bamba region in Angola. So this is uh, one of the afro mexican music. And we have this rhythm, the Bambas, they are related with rumba in Veracruz. So we want to play this song, La Bamba.
Bueno, este instrumento también, no sé si lo conocen, la quijada de burro. Es un instrumento que está en todos los países que tienen esta diáspora del oeste africano en Latinoamérica. Y en México se usa, fui, fui bien príncipe afrométicamente en son de voz, no sé por qué más, que es eh, diferente a voz de Lenzi. En Cuba el chachachá nació con este también, en Puerto Rico, en Costa Rica, en Perú, en Colombia, la caraca de esta.
bien? Pienso que un sueño parecido no volverá más y me pintaba las manos y la cara de azul y me improviso rápido el viento me riego y me hizo volar en un suelo infinito
Buenas noches, ¿cómo estamos?
Thank you. 
that we that what I'm gonna say now is not gonna be exactly the truth because we <laughs> no, I'm meaning that we keep finding new documents, we keep finding so what is true or what I'm saying now, maybe ne next year we change because we get more information. But I mean what Chani said that this story like the country that it was done, at least for the people who don't know what really happened, it may seem like something like, oh wow, the Spaniards went to Cuba, they went to Colombia, and they incorporated the music in, in flamenco, how cool. Because like the final result is that the music is really cool, right? But what happened during 500 years was not actually really cool. But and the Cante de Vuelta is always like the round trip between Spain and Cuba, Argentina, whatever. And they never incorporate the African part. So the Cante de Vuelta should start with Africa, even before talking about Spain. Because it's before even the Spaniards start the conquista, we have records that we had slaves in Spain in the 14th century, even before the colonization. There is a, I like to tell this story, there is a brotherhood in, in Spanish, it's called Hermandad. So in Sevilla, uh, there is a brotherhood founded in 1393, and it's called La Hermandad de los Negritos. And this Hermandad de los Negritos is still there, it's still in Sevilla. So it's something that you can still see exist there since 1393, so it's like 100 years before the colonization of the Americas. So anyway, to make it short, so what I mean is that by then, in Spain, we already had enslaved people, even 100 years before that the slave trade started. So all these influences, because the difference between the enslaved people in Spain is that they could buy the freedom at some point. So they could become free. I mean, still very marginalized in society. But that was a big difference compared to the enslaved people in, in the American continent. So then these free people, they would participate in some way in the society in Spain. And they would be allowed to play music in parties or festivities. So all this African music already was incorporated in, in the flamenco music by then, before the, the round trip, the Ida Vuelta. So that's why we like to make this clarification because people usually, don't, some people, they don't even know that in Spain we had like enslaved people even before the conquista because actually the Portuguese started. They were the first ones to start like all these slave groups and, and, and everything, right? So anyway, just at least it's some kind of knowledge that we can incorporate when we talk about even rumba or... And to give you another important thing is that if you go to YouTube and you check first flamenco dancer ever, it's a footage of year 1900 in the exposition in Paris. It was like this thing called Universal Expo in Paris, in France year 1900, exactly. So the first flamenco dancer ever recorded is a black dancer. It's a guy of Afro-Cuban descent. Jacinto Padilla. Jacinto Padilla. So. There's no sounds on the video as well. Yeah. That's how old it is. And, and, we don't have to sync up audio and video again. Yeah. And, and it was recorded by this French brother, the Lumiere brother, and they were kind of the first one to start recording and, and making movies. So, and the funny thing is that we just know about that from like five years ago. That's what I'm saying, that what I'm saying now, maybe five years from now, we may have different information. But all my life, I thought that the first flamenco dancer ever recorded was Jose Otero. Because that's what the history books told me. Like, Jose Otero is that guy dancing in Paris at the Universal Exposition. And then, five years ago, we find out that it was not Jose Otero. It was Jacinto Padilla, and he was a guy of Afro-Cuban descent. So, just to tell you like how important African music always plays in, in flamenco. 
el gran cubano de Matanzas al señor Rodríguez, el padre del son Montuno. ¿Eh? Bueno, estamos listos, maestro. Bueno. Saludos fraternal y un aplauso fuerte. About a big, beautiful round of applause for these masters of the rumba, David Oquendo, Vicente, and Juan Díaz. Ahí nada más. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Elena. It's a pleasure for us to be here, and we would like to start not with an uh, announcement, we would like to start with some music. And the entidad in charge to open the road is the choir. Baba, I know you're so good. Baba, I know you're so good. Polo polo ya tu tu bambi, e tu lolo dijo, moni a la cuana con mamá que ya irá u, eh, para su ayo. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. Vamos a igual el dancer Maestro Pedrito Domech. Basically, the Cuban culture, we call Afro-Cuban culture. We speak, we speak Spanish and from Spain and Africa. Both influence converge, converge to Cuba. From Spain, the mother patria, we receive the guitar. We receive the language and the canto hondo. A los curros en Cuba, en el Afuey. Con cuando dan el tambor de esa tribu salvaje. The price is from the Africa, right? But now, for us, we create this type of style that we call rumba, that is part of the movement different kind of movement. The first one uh, we call Bembe. This is a way to play the Bembe. Original is playing with the Bata drums. A different way to play the Bembe with a wheel too and voices. But we present for, for you some of the part of our culture. And we would like to play for you something that we create in Cuba. All these types of drums originally came to Cuba in different way. The ancestral way. They didn't bring the, the drums from Africa because they came from a slave. They created the drums in Cuba from the tree. And the skin is the original way that with the screen to tie and tuning to slay. As we are way. All right, this is our virtue. We call this tambor improvised quinto with the maestro Vicente Sanchez. <laughs> These two drums we call Tres Golpes and Tumbador, made by Maestro Roman Diaz. <laughs> we call this complex Guaguas, Cata, or Palitos different name playing for our young master Igor Arias <laughs> and those are our dancers Carlos Mateo <laughs> Pedrito Romesh and our flower Yosenia Alvarez
Ricardo Rafael, meu filho de Alan. style that we call Guaguancó. Un bailador, un bailador 
Y un coro bien acostado, mi guapa no se ha mirado, un poquito mirado. Y el bebé de mi casa va a dar a la mamá.
más a más of el tres cubanos, el cuatro puertorriqueño, hasta el triple y la guitarra de jazz, how about for the one and only, y un experto en el changui de Guantánamo, Ben Jamín Lápidas, que está ahí, ahí nada más. And before we go any further, each week there's some people who make this show happen. We want to thank Jeremy for the sound, Lynn for working the door, and also we want to thank um, our videographers, Orville, and probably our youngest and cutest videographer ever, Amari. So many thanks to everyone who walked out. And before you go, um, at the door, at the table, we um, were given a lot of um, this COVID test. If anyone wants COVID test, we have a bunch that are going out. Um, they, they only last throughout the summer, and the date's coming up, so we can take them. Um, some COVID tests, they'll be at the front desk if you guys want to take any home with you. And with that, we have um, some, go to our Facebook page, BX Music, we have all kinds of great programming coming up this summer, we hope to see you back. Un aplauso fuerte para Harana Beach. también para nuestro ídolo de Puerto Rico, el gran Roberto Clemente, que lo ves ahí, gran pelotero en la Liga Grande, Roberto Clemente, our great hero, national hero for Puerto Rico, representing blackness to the fullest, Puerto Rico and in professional baseball. Buenas noches, como decimos, también caballeros, mucho H, buenas noches.